Coming up on Hot TV, we take a look at an orchestra student who will be attending USC in the fall, a sophomore raising money through photo shoots, and the baseball team getting through to the next round of playoffs. This is Hot TV for Wednesday, May 15th. Good morning, Hebron High School. I'm Melissa Gonzalez. And I'm Camille Bell. After playing violin for a decade, it all paid off for senior Elizabeth Way, as she will attend the University of Southern California in the fall to major in violin performance. Ellery Lyles takes a look into how she got there. Elizabeth Way has been playing the violin since she was seven years old, and her involvement with orchestra has been a big part of her life. I started playing because my mom signed me up for classes, but eventually became a thing that like, I really wanted to keep playing. Way's musical abilities opened up opportunities to showcase and develop her skills through multiple organizations, such as the Greater Dallas Youth Orchestra. Being in GYO and in Hebron Orchestra has helped me a lot. It has helped me learn how to play in like public places and like get over like stage fright because we have a lot more like concerts. Um, there's always like a really great community being in orchestra with other people and it's really fun making music with like your friends and other musicians. Way is described as being someone who does whatever it takes to achieve what she wants. With leadership positions at school, she is a role model for those around her. She's very humble and that, I think that makes for a great leadership quality. So it's very easy for the other students to, um, to follow her as a leader um, musically. And then she's also our orchestra president. And so she helps run the leadership team as we prepare all of our events throughout the year. Way auditioned for USC earlier in the year with hopes of getting into their music program. She recently found out that she got in and quickly committed to the school. I was very happy, I might have cried. And yeah, it was just um, really nice to see like the hard work I put in pay off. Wei's mom, Xu and Hung, says she hopes USC will help her daughter become a more self-sufficient person. Her daughter knows that college will be a major stepping stone into growing a professional music career. I hope she can uh, be a more uh, independent thinking musician to see different style of people there. I hope to become a better a better musician, be able to like, continue to grow as a musician and hopefully be able to maybe work in a professional orchestra when I'm older. Reporting for Hawk TV, I'm Ellery Lyles. Thanks, Ellery. If you are interested in seeing Way and the orchestra play, their final concert will be tomorrow at 7.30 in the auditorium. With just over a week left of school, summer is coming fast. Here are some places in the DFW area you can go this summer.
Friday, the Kyoto Municipal Court held a sober prom event to educate students on the impact of drinking and driving and have them commit to staying sober at prom. Aiden Herring takes a look at the event. And he's going to be throwing stuff at you. hosted his first ever sober prom last Friday with a big turnout. Kyoto Municipal Court member Christina Rodriguez explains the purpose of this event. So the sober prom event is to educate um, all students uh, to stay sober during prom. So it just is to educate them about, you know, when they go to prom and they have this event uh, for them to keep sober and because we've been seeing a lot of, um, you know, deaths in reference to alcohol and, and driving. With the arrival of prom season comes law enforcement on high alert. However, Officer Graham says there isn't many changes to the daily routine. I think most of our schedule is pretty much the same unless we're doing educational stuff like this. Um, but we are aware that you know that's occurring and then you know, we're trying to change our, some of our uh, patrol patterns, if you will, just on an officer by officer basis. Uh. Rodriguez says she hopes the students take something from this event and apply it to real life situations. Um, at least for them to read over the material, find, uh, you know, to stay sober for these events, know what the dangers are. Uh, what resources they have available, or even if it's for themselves, but other, you know, for other friends and family members and students. Reporting for Hawk TV, I'm Aiden Herring. Thanks, Aiden. With summer right around the corner, some teenagers are raising money for mission trips through the traditional methods such as making jewelry or shirts. Sophomore Heather Nixon took a different approach by bringing in her passion for photography and it's offering photo shoots to those who donate money for her mission trip costs. Sophia Mahmoud takes a look into how raising money for her mission trip is going thus far. Sophomore Heather Nixon has turned to her love for photography and orders her raise money for her upcoming mission trip on June 16th. She says she was inspired to do something others weren't. I just wanted to do something different um, and photography is really something that I've uh, learned a lot about. Nixon says mission trips allow her to build a more open mind by experiencing the lives of people living in other parts of the world. You know, growing up, you don't really, you really done have the I opportunity, like, I guess, to experience um, other parts of the world and what goes on there and how God can like make an impact in those people's lives. Nixon's mom, Andrea Nixon, says she was very supportive of her daughter's idea. I thought it was really cool. And I wish I would have had something like that to do when I was her age. Sophomore Macy Newman says Nixon's photos give a good vibe. It always makes me feel like very, like kind of like light and airy, and like I feel very beautiful because I don't hurt the way her, she does her pictures. It's very, very well done. Nixon appreciates how she's able to start pursuing her passion as a career now instead of later. I can start now and kind of get a head start on what I really want to do and kind of like miss, like make mistakes now, and then later in the future I'll be uh, more prepared and more experienced. <laughs> Reporting for Hawk TV, I'm Sophia Mahmood. Thanks, Sophia. You can check out Nixon's photography at her Instagram account and website in the description down below. The Avengers saga wrapped up with Endgame a few weeks ago. We decided to bring in two fans to face off with some Marvel trivia. I'm Coach Congan. I coach uh, football here at Hebron High School, as well as wrestling, and I teach English to juniors. Uh, Nick Wilson, part of the baseball team, Stuco, NHS. Awesome. All right. <laughs> okay, so first question. What is Captain Marvel's real name? <laughs> so, okay. What is Captain Marvel's real name? Carol Devers. All right. I knew that one. I was just trying to let Nick get a little bit of confidence. Name all six infinity stones. <clears throat> Power Stone, Mind Stone, uh, I might have been early on this name. Oh. Power, Mind, Wow. I'm, <laughs> uh, I know what they're in. I don't remember the Power, stone names. mind, time. What? What's the ether? From Thor 2. The little it's, Oh my gosh. That's not Galley. Shit. <laughs> Power. It's, it's literally the purple one. It's literally the purple one. You know, you, you're getting there. Soul Stone. Did we say Soul Stone. Oh, Power. 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 Last one that y'all didn't mention was the space stone. Ah ha ha ha! that is frustrating. Okay, now, next question. And this, now it's gonna start getting hard. In what movie does the Tesseract first appear? Uh, The Avengers. 
Oh, run that back. Uh, all right. So yeah, um, Captain Captain America. Which one? Mm. First one. All right, first one. Good. First one. question. Who killed Tony Stark's friend? I'm gonna give this one a key. Yes! Right, right. The Winter Soldier, Lucky Barnes. Alright, let's go. Alright, so this question, this final question, is worth five points. What is Thor's hammer? Moynier. Spell it. Don't want to say it. Moynier. Alright, that is it. Thanks to Nick Wilson and Coach Congdon for participating. Spring football practices will conclude with the annual spring game tonight. Michelle Yu takes a look at how the team is preparing for the fall. With the new season coming up, the football team has been preparing for next year. Offensive coordinator Jeff Hill says the team is looking forward to the new season. Confidence sky high. Uh, I'm excited about the new role being the offensive coordinator. Um, I think the uh, the players are excited. I think they're they're eager to get uh, out on the field on Friday nights and uh, and play. Uh, so I'm 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 100% all in, bought in. I think uh, most all the kids are the same way. Uh, they're ready to get a, get the lights turned on and, and go play. Even with losing some key players from last year, Coach Brian Brazel says the players they do have returning will help them be prepared for the next fall. And so this year, going through spring, it feels like we have a lot more experience coming back. We did lose some outstanding players, but we feel like we do have a lot more experience going into this coming season. Running back William White says the team has been progressing throughout the spring practices with new additions to the team. I feel like our defense is improving overall, and I feel like with some transfers on the offense that we got recently during the spring, that it's improving as well. And I feel like since we have we have younger guys that are coming up. I feel like we're going to be good for the next few years to come, too. Hill says the team has set goals for next season to help them improve from last season when they went three rounds deep into the playoffs. Pretty much all of them said, you know, state or go beyond what we did this past year, which was go three rounds. So they want to at least exceed that. Reporting for Hawk TV, I'm Michelle Yu. Thanks, Michelle. The JV game will begin at 5 p.m. and the varsity game will be at 7 p.m. The baseball team has advanced to the third round of playoffs after beating Mansfield in a three-game series this weekend. Melissa and Gonzalez got to take a closer look at how they've been preparing. The baseball team have successfully gone through the second round of playoffs and have advanced to the third. Coach Steven Stone and senior Ryan Allison say that despite a difficult start, the team stayed unfazed and managed to pull off two wins. Well, kids did a great job because the way we lost was the, the, the hardest thing. You know, we had a three-run lead going into the last inning, uh, gave up the lead, and then eventually lost in ten innings. Um, and in baseball, we, you know, your pitching is the name of the game, and we lost a couple pitchers that game uh, due to pitch counts because the game went so long. And so the adversity that was facing those kids was pretty great. And uh, uh, I think just the fact that they've been there before, uh, we've dealt with adversity all year long, and uh, it wasn't anything new to them. So one thing our kids don't do is they don't panic. Uh, they always think that there's a way out and uh, they definitely found a way out. Just kept striving, kept, kept hitting, kept, just, we just had to out hit the team because they're a good hitting team. So we just have to keep, keep doing us. Stone says that the team's unselfishness is one of their strongest assets. We've got a good balance of kids. We've got, uh, um, you know, a good balance of seniors and juniors and sophomores that all contribute. Uh, you know, one of our mottos is pass the baton, which just means, you know, you know it might be a different hero every night, and uh, if it's somebody's, you know, somebody's off one day, then they pass the baton on to somebody that uh, might be able to carry the team that night. And so being unselfish, having a bunch of players that are unselfish that don't care who gets the credit, that's when you know your team is going to have success, when people don't care who gets the credit, and this team doesn't really care. Senior Brayton Matthews and Allison say that the team hasn't lost their enthusiasm throughout playoffs and is looking forward to a rematch against Flower Mound in the third round. I think that, well, we, we haven't been necessarily consistent, but we kept energy, which has allowed us to stay in games that we shouldn't win. Definitely got the energy. We wanted this re revenge shot against Flower Mound since they swept us earlier, so this is what we want. With a few students playing some of their final games, Matthews and Stone say it just makes them play with their full potential. It definitely makes us play harder and makes us try, or makes us give maximum effort the whole time. So.
Well, anytime you get to the end of a season, there's a sense of urgency because you don't know when the last game is going to come. And so we always talk about how to you know, play every game like it's your last. Well, now it really hits home because we are down the home stretch. And, and uh, with this group of seniors, you know, they don't know when that last game is going to come. And uh, for the whole group, it, they know that it's, you know, at any time you could be playing your last game together. And so uh, I think it gives them a little extra incentive to make sure they're on top of their game and they're preparing and they're doing the things necessary to, to be successful. Reporting for Hawk TV, I'm Melissa Gonzalez. Baseball's next series begins tomorrow against Firemont at 7 p.m. at Highland Park High School. Game 2 will be Friday at 7 at Irving High School, and if needed, Game 3 will be at 4 o'clock on Saturday at Dallas Baptist University. In other sports news, senior Jenny Park competed in her fourth state golf tournament Monday and Tuesday. After the first day, Park was in a tie for fourth, but at the time of recording, the final round had not yet concluded. Check our Hawk TV Twitter account for final results from yesterday's round. On Monday and Tuesday of next week, the boys' golf team will compete at their state tournament at Legacy Hills Golf Course in Georgetown. That's it for this year's season. I'm Camille Bell. And I'm Melissa Gonzalez. Have any story suggestions? Email us down below. And follow us on Snapchat, Twitter, and Instagram. And have a great summer.